Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing BP midstream stock and analyzing its financial ratios. Let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe or comment below. I respond to all comments. Also, if you'd like me to do a private Zoom session, receive a custom valuation for a stock of your choice, or support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. BP Midstream is an oil and gas midstream company. Midstream refers to points in the oil production process that falls between upstream and downstream. Midstream activities include the storage, processing, and transportation of petroleum. BP Midstream is a subsidiary of BP, which is the sixth largest oil and gas company in the world. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $1.1 billion, so they're a small cap company. They're trading at $10 a share. And to get the shares outstanding, it's market cap divided by stock price gives you shares outstanding, 104 million. The way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows, and then you discount that back to today's dollars. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Capital expenditures are property, plant, and equipment. And if a company has positive free cash flow, it has the ability to pay down debt, pay dividends, acquire other businesses, or invest back into their business to grow it. If a company has negative free cash flow, it might not be able to do any of those things. And this company has positive growing free cash flow each year, so that looks really good. Their net income also looks really good. Their net income also is growing and positive. Net income is a profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. Their revenue is pretty steady. It goes from 103 million to 128 million. Although in 2018 and 2019, they had more net income than revenue. That does seem odd and I'll show you why. On the top of the income statement is revenue. And then next is cost of revenue. So in 2019, $128 million of revenue, and it cost them $24 million to generate that revenue. So their gross profit is $104 million. Then a company has to report operating expenses. Those are the expenses that are not directly related to making the product or delivering the service. So a common type of operating expense is selling general and administrative. That's the payroll for marketing, accounting, legal, those types of areas that aren't directly making the product. Then a company reports its interest expense, the interest they pay in their debt. They paid 15.1 million on their debt. The next line item is other income or expenses because sometimes companies generate income or they have expenses that are not directly related to making their product or providing a service. So in 2019, this company reported $116 million in earnings from equity interest. That amount is pretty close to their total revenue. This company reports equity method investments. Equity investment is an accounting technique used to record profits when investing in another company. Equity method accounting is generally used when a company owns 20 to 50% of another company. So BP has significant influence over these other companies. BP lists five companies using the equity method investments. They list the percent they own, and they list how much money they received from the company. If a company receives income or has losses related to any type of activity, even if it's not part of their everyday business, they do have to report it on their income statement. From an investor's point of view, it is nice to have this extra cash flow coming in. Of course, nothing is for free. They probably had to raise some debt in order to invest in these businesses. Let's look at a capital structure. They have $468 million of debt, $240 million of equity and the interest they pay in their debt is 3.23%. And BP is a master limited partnership, so it does not pay income taxes. To qualify, the business must receive at least 90% of its revenue from natural resources or real estate. They receive their revenue from natural resources. And an MLP issues units, not shares, so it has no equity. So to calculate some of the ratios later, we need equity. To figure out the equity, I just took total assets minus total liabilities on a balance sheet. 
So they are a bit leveraged, 66% of their capital structure is debt, which means 34% is equity. Cost of equity is 11.69%, and we use a capital asset pricing model to figure that out. And the CAPM formula uses the beta, that's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And they have a beta of 1.22, so the stock is a little more volatile than the market, but it's not too volatile. The higher the beta, the higher the cost of equity. And their WAC is 6.1%. And that's a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. The WAC is a discount rate companies use when they want to take on new projects or acquire another business. So say for example a new project came their way and it cost them $1 million up front to take on a project. But they would receive $100,000 of cash flows over the next 20 years. What they would do is they would discount those future 20 years of cash flows back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. And if the value of those 20 years of cash flows in today's dollars was $1.5 million, they would take on a project since it cost them $1 million, they'd be making $500,000. But if they discounted those 20 years of cash flows back to today and the value was $800,000, they would not take on a project because it cost them a $1 million, they'd be losing $200,000. You only want to take on projects that add value to the company. The WAC of 6.1% is the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows for this model. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's $2.8 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $2.7 billion. We divide that by 104 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price at 26.15. They're trading at 10.06, so they're trading at a 62% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is even higher. They're at 32.55, so they're saying the stock is 69% undervalued. They're saying it's a really strong buy. And Simply Wall Street gets their valuation based off of the average analyst estimate. Let's see where the stock has been trading the past few years. So the stock peaked in the low 20s a few years ago but it's been dropping a lot ever since, which indicates investors aren't willing to pay $20 for the stock, they're willing to pay $10 at this point. Maybe in the future, they'll drive the price up, but right now it sits at $10. And they just started paying a dividend last year, they pay four cents every quarter. It's good to understand the stock price is not directly related to how well a company's doing financially. The stock price is related to supply and demand of the market. The more people that want to buy a stock, it will push the price higher. And the more people want to sell a stock, it pushes the price lower until equilibrium is met. So there could be companies that are reporting bad financials, but their stock price keeps going up. There could also be companies that are reporting really good financials and their stock price keeps going down. Because the market is forward thinking, it looks to the future, not the past. Let's look at the financial ratios. Really good PE, the median for the market is 16.4, the average is 18.1. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 6.3, so investors are paying $6.30 for $1 of earnings. They don't have such a good price to sales ratio, the median is 2.0, the average is 4.7. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue or shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 8.2. So investors are paying $8.20 for $1 revenue. Price to book is a little high as well. The median is 2.4, the average is 4.9. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 4.4. So investors are paying $4.40 for $1 book value. Equity is total assets minus total liabilities on the balance sheet. They have a good interest coverage ratio. The median is 4.1, the average is 13.1. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0, they're 5.7, so they can easily cover their interest payment. EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes. On the income statement, it's called operating income. ROE is really good. The median is 12%, the average is 13%. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 70% because they're bringing in so much money from their equity investments. Really high current ratio, the median is 1.3, the average is 1.8. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2, they're at 11.6, so they can easily cover their current liabilities. Current assets are assets that can be liquidated into cash within 12 months. 
Examples are cash, accounts receivables, and inventory. Current liabilities are debts and payables that are due within 12 months. Examples are current debt and accounts payable. So you can see they have a ton of cash on that balance sheet, $98 million. They only have $10 million of current liabilities. So although it's nice to have a lot of cash, I don't invest in companies so they can keep cash on their balance sheet. I invest in companies so they can grow their business and provide me a good return. That's why the current ratio doesn't need to be above two because that means they're operating inefficiently. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on 22 oil and gas midstream companies and BP is here in the beginning. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they are better in PE ratio. They're 6.3, average is 8.4. They're much worse in price to sales. They're better in price to book at 4.4. They have the highest current ratio of the group. Their ROE is much higher than average at 70%. Their debt is also a little higher than average at 66%, average is 58%. And they're a small company, only 1 billion market cap. The average is 11 billion. And they do pay a higher than average dividend. Their dividend yield is almost 14%. The average is 12%. So to summarize, I do have them trading at a 62% discount. Their ratios look decent and their financials look really good. Let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe or comment below. I respond to all comments. Also, if you'd like to do a private Zoom session, receive a custom valuation for a stock of your choice or support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.